Okay, hi everybody. In this video, we're going to do a quick introduction to pthread. So this may be your first time ever doing actual parallel computing, and we're gonna do our first one today, if that is the case. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to use the pthread library in C to write parallel programs. We're going to create threads to run on multiple cores, uh, and then we will be able to use that, uh, that tool, pthreading, as a tool to implement parallel programs later in our semester. So for now, let's just set up a basic program. So we will call our program example.c, uh, and we will include a few basic files that we always include, like standard IO, standard lib, and we will declare our main function and we will return zero. Now, real quick, we're going to set up a make file. So a make file is a tool. A make file is uh, a set of instructions on how to usually compile your code. It's what we call a build tool. Um, make, fi make file, or rather, make is a build tool. Make is a build tool. It helps us uh, build large software projects. We're going to use it to build a relatively small software project, but it's still going to help us uh, so that we don't have to repeat ourselves so frequently on the command line when we're trying to test our code. So we'll start this by declaring a target all. All is the default. If you type make uh, on the command line, then it's going to run the all target if it exists. If not, it's going to run the top target, whatever target that may be. In this case, we're going to create a um, all target and we're going to set its dependency to be a file called example. Example is going to be our executable. We already made an example.c, so we're going to make an executable, a binary called example. So we'll make a target called example and we will say example depends on example.c. Depends on means that uh, it is going to either try to create example.c or uh, if example.c already exists, uh, it will try to, um, it will check if it's been modified since the last time you ran make. And if the answer is no, uh, nothing will happen. If the answer is yes, it will repeat the commands, uh, spe the recipe specified by the target example. So what I mean by that is we are going to tell this target, we're going to set up the recipe for how to build example. So we're gonna do GCC, we're gonna add our flags uh, for debugging and for compiler warnings. Uh, we're gonna tell it that we need example.c and we are going to tell it the output is example. Uh, so what this file says, the way this file is executed is when I type make over here, it's going to go to target all, say, okay, all depends on example. Okay, example does not exist. So we're going to go to target example and look up how to make it. So we'll look at our dependencies, example.c is gonna exist. Uh, but it's going to have changed, or in this case, the file example doesn't exist. Uh, so we're going to execute the recipe to create it. And the recipe is just this GCC line. So if I save this file uh, and I run make over here, uh, it, I hit a few steps from you, but you'll see it runs this GCC uh, command that I typed over here. Now you'll see that example has changed or exists now. So if I type make again, it will say, well, there's nothing to do. Example has not changed since the last time we ran make, so it doesn't matter. If I delete example and run make again, it knows make or example doesn't exist, so it will run again. Uh, and to make clear the dependency here, example.c, if we open example.c, and we add a comment, even a comment, it doesn't really know the difference. If you change this file at all, uh, it will cause it to remake. You'll have to make it again. 
Uh, this feature is really useful for larger software projects where compiling takes a long time. So for now, we're going to leave our make file alone. We have a basic executable that doesn't really do anything. And we're going to open this executable, or this uh, C file, and we're going to start our parallel program with pthreads. So we're going to open the manual page for a function call pthread create. pthread create is the function that is going to create a new thread for us. Uh, to use pthread create, we're going to include the pthread header library that tells us how to use pthreads. So we will pound include pthread.h. Um, and just to give us a baseline, we're going to say hello world to give us something to compare to. Uh, and then we are going to uh, start working with our program. So pthread create is a function that takes a pointer to a pthread, a pointer to pthread attributes, a function pointer, and a void pointer ambiguously named arg. So the way this works is when you create a thread, a thread um, runs on a different core, it runs code, uh, and much like your program needs a place to start called main, uh, the pthread also needs a place to start, which is going to be this function that we specify. Uh, I say it's much like main because main runs on the main thread. You implicitly get a main thread when you start running your program, but we can create new threads. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So to get started, we need a pthread and some attributes. In this case, pthread and our attributes will be filled in by the pthread create function. So we just need to create one, allocate some memory for one. So we will just call this pthread t thread, uh, and that will allocate some memory on the stack for our thread. Of course, you can malloc a thread if you want to. Sometimes you need to. Oh. You'll see I just got caught with my slurm job getting killed, but that's fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and open this file again. So uh, yes, we can create a pthread t with thread, and then we can also create a pthread attribute t, which we will just call adder. Uh, and so this is our creation. We've declared the memory, but these things are not ready to be used yet. Uh, we're also going to need a function that runs our, that our thread runs. So let's go ahead and create a, a function. So this function takes a vo or returns a void pointer and also receives a void pointer as an argument. So we will just go ahead and call this function foo because we always do. Uh, and this will take arguments and for now we're not going to use our arguments so I will just name them unused. Uh, and this function can really do anything any other function can do. Uh, any pointers you hand in here will still be valid. Uh, this thread can do all sorts of things. It can allocate memory. It can do other things. So we'll just say hello world from thread. Uh, and that's all our function will do. Uh, and yeah, let's go from there. So we'll go ahead and call pthread create make some space here. We'll give it the address of our thread because it is this function is going to initialize our thread and start it. We'll also give it the address of our attributes in case we want to check in on those. Uh, we'll give it our function pointer. Uh, and we're not using our args, so we will just pass it null. Uh, passing it null is OK because this argument is what is going to show up up here when we call this function from this thread. Uh, if you need to actually pass a value, then you need to give an actual pointer to something here. Uh, that may mean you have to malloc it. Uh, things can get kind of weird if you use the stack because the stack will pop. So uh, in main, that's not such an issue, but you, know, you may need to malloc things before you pass them into this function, just like any other function call, really. Uh, okay, and then 
that's really it. That should be enough to start a thread. Now we'll go ahead and compile this so I can make a quick point. So you'll notice two things. One is we have a warning that the parameter unused is unused. Okay, fair enough. Um, you also notice we have a warning that control ends uh, non-void function. So the reason that happens is we should have returned up here. Notice this return type is not void, it is void star. For now, we'll just return null. So um, we'll move on from there. That's where we will, uh, we'll go ahead and recompile. We have the same warning about unused, and then we have a linker error. Remember this is called a linker error uh, that looks like this when the, uh, when LD returns one, you have a linker error. So this is an undefined reference to pthread create. Now remember, uh, we did include pthread.h. It's right here. So we included pthread.h, uh, but this is not a compiler error. This is a linker error. It's telling us that we did not link correctly with pthread. To link correctly with pthread, we need to link with dash pthread. So let's change our make file. We will add a dash pthread. It's very important that this goes at the end. Uh, so you want to do that last. We will also do a neat trick here. If we change the make file, if we make the make file a dependency, then it will recompile our code when we change the make file. You may not want to do this for very large projects, but it can be a neat trick to help you develop uh, local projects. So we run make uh, and we get no complaints. So it was just mad about this dash p thread. Now, that being said, we are not ready to run our program yet. Uh, whenever you create a thread, it's going to run on its own, and so is your main thread. Uh, really, everything needs to be caught up and uh, what we call synchronized before our main thread ends. Uh, we do not want to leave any children, child threads behind. So after we call pthread create, sometime later, we need to call pthread join. So join will clean up after a thread has completed. So this code will run printf, it will return, and we will join back together. So we'll see how it works here. In this case, you just give it the thread, just the thread, not a pointer, but the actual thread. Uh, and also you can give it the address of a return value here. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So we'll do pthread join, we'll give it our thread. Uh, and in this case, let's just give the return value null. Uh, we don't need to get the return value. Uh, return value would give us this, whatever pointer is here, it would give us a pointer to whatever we return. Uh, so again, if you allocated something here to return, you need to make sure it's malloc. If it's on the stack, you are running into some issues. Uh, each thread has its own stack. So uh, that may, that's something we'll talk about in more detail as we go through the semester. But uh, understand that the stack here disappears when you return. So you do not want to return a pointer to this stack or you are asking for a lot of trouble. Uh, so, and I didn't mean to paste that, but that's okay. So this join here uh, will simply, uh, well, join the thread. So the way this works is you're going to call pthread create. It's going to create a new thread and that thread is going to start executing in the background. Uh, if you were to do some code here, maybe you make a loop uh, you know, you write whatever you want, this code would keep executing and asynchronously, the function foo would also execute. If you have more than one core, they could possibly execute simultaneously, it depends. Uh, so to make sure that everybody has finished what they're doing, we want to call pthread join on the thread uh, and you'll see the description is just join with a terminated thread. It waits until this thread returns 
Uh, and then once it returns, we can take the argument or the return value, we can clean up uh, and make sure everything ends cleanly. You must call join for every thread that you create before your program exits. Uh, so there's a couple pitfalls here. One is that if we had a while loop up here that was infinite or any kind of loop that was infinite, uh, pthread join would just get stuck here. This main thread will wait here on pthread join until you've finished um, this, thread, this function. If this function never ends, neither does the underlying main. So that's a big problem. Uh, so you want to be careful how you use these or you can get stuck. Your program will appear to hang and you will just stay there uh, forever, possibly. Uh, it can make it very difficult to debug. So uh, anyway, this will terminate. This will join. Let's go ahead and give it a shot when we make. Uh, and let's run our code. So let's run dot slash example. And you'll see we got a segmentation fault. So that's not what we wanted. Let's val grind it and see what happens. So when we val grind it, we're going to find out uh, that we have some uh, conditional jump or move depending on uninitialized values. So that basically means you had an if statement somewhere, or perhaps you even had a function call somewhere that used a value that was not initialized. This can often be a sign that maybe you have a dangling pointer or maybe you just created a value and forgot to set it. Any of these sorts of things can be problematic. If we take a look at our code, we'll find on line 19 that we call this with an uninitialized value. Some variable here is uninitialized. Well, we're here to initialize the thread. Uh, we'll come back to adder. The function is definitely initialized because we, we implemented it here. Uh, and null is fine, the arguments are fine. So the likely suspect is adder. So it turns out that we actually need to um, initialize our attributes for our thread. So to initialize the attributes for our thread, we want to call a function that will initialize it. So let's check out how to do that. So pthread adder init. Uh, it comes in a pair. You'll notice we have a pthread attribute init, we have a pthread attribute destroy, uh, and we want to use these to initialize our attributes. These will set up the attributes to have the right behavior. This is sort of boilerplate for now at least uh, that will correctly initialize the memory for adder. So let's go ahead and give it a call. Before we do create, let's send it the address of adder. Uh, and likewise, we need to destroy it when we're done with it. We may not be done with it until after we join. So you want to make sure that you're actually done with this. When you destroy it, this is basically going to free any memory. It's going to clean up the data, make sure everything is set up correctly uh, to terminate your program. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will sandwich our create and join in our adder uh, init and destroy. So let's save, let's compile, no warnings, we'll run, and we get hello world and hello world from our thread. And if we run valgrind, we'll find we don't have any issues anymore. So that's fantastic. So this is just a really quick introduction on how to use pthreads. Uh, we're gonna talk about a lot of pitfalls this semester with doing different types of parallel computing. But this will get you started. So this is kind of our first introduction. Uh, so you can use this as sort of a jumping off point. Uh, maybe start thinking about how you could possibly uh, create multiple threads. How would you actually do that? How would you uh, make sure if you create multiple threads that you join them all before your program exits? Uh, these sorts of things. So this is this has to do with allocating memory to create your threads, storing your threads. Maybe you want to create an array uh, to hold all of your threads, or maybe you have a different data structure in mind. But you'll want to somehow keep track of them all. You need to keep track of them all so you can join them. Uh, if you do not join them, then, well, 
uh, let's leave it at the behavior isn't well defined. Uh, it may work how you think it will, it may not. Uh, we'll talk more later in the semester about what we call race conditions um, and different sort of invalid states for parallel programming. Uh, but for now, uh, this is a good start. Uh, so I encourage you to remember to check out these manual pages. Of course, they're online. If you don't want to use the terminal to access them, you can always Google the same command and you will get the same page. Uh, also, uh, remember to check out our resources for Centaurus page where we try to keep things generally up to date uh, on instructions on how to do things. Uh, the last thing... Uh, to point out is that when you run parallel jobs, you need to run them in Slurm. I know I didn't hear because this is a very simple example, uh, but we do not want to crash the login node by using too many resources. So uh, the correct thing to do then is to either create a batch script and use sbatch to submit our job or use salloc. There's another video on my channel that explains how you can use these. Make sure you use them. Um, we don't want to get our permissions pulled for Centaurus because we created an infinite loop using all the cores or these sorts of things. You'll also want to remember, and you can check those videos for how to do this, uh, you'll want to allocate more than one core if you actually want to run in parallel. If you allocate one core and you create multiple threads, they will take turns. We'll talk about that more too. But anyway, that is a quick wrap up for today, uh, and we'll see you next time.